Hi there, Lori Williams here, and today I'd like to talk about um, conserving alcohol ink during the coronavirus uh, shortage of alcohol. And you may be finding yourself with plenty of ink, but not enough alcohol, or for whatever reason, you don't want to use the alcohol. A um, couple of things I want to discuss about that. One is, is that if you have a bottle, an open bottle of alcohol, there's nothing else you could do with it other than you maybe have it at home to sanitize if you go out. Uh, most of us are quarantined, so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And um, the other thing is, is you don't, you know, I would refrain from, if you're concerned about um, the alcohol, alcohol shortage, that you refrain from... Um, pouring in your art instead um create or use this time to create art that challenges you to to create representational art because it, when you do representational type art you don't end up using a whole lot of alcohol the other thing that you could do is use blending solution so if um, you have blending solution you can use that in lieu of the alcohol and so i just wanted to talk about a few ways where we can create art with alcohol ink without using alcohol. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create, I have a piece of um, photo paper. This is Kirkland photo paper. I'm using the back side. And the reason I use the back side is it'll sink right into the first side. It's, it's the, the emulsion here is designed to absorb ink and that's the opposite of what I want to do. The back side, however, repels ink um, very similar to a Yupo or a Nara paper or some of the other substrates that are available. Okay, I'm going to start out with three colors. I'm going to use denim, I'm going to use sunshine yellow, and I am going to use meadow. Actually, this one is lettuce. And I'm going to just create a quick poured landscape with just the alcohol ink. I'm going to put down three different colors here in a row. Oops. Okay, so we don't have any alcohol to move it around. I could use blending solution, but I'm not going to do that because in this demonstration, I just want to show how we can do this without um, blending solution or alcohol. Okay, now I'm gonna use a coffee stirrer and I'm just gonna use it to spread this out and blend it together where it meets. Create a nice little now I'm using some of my old paper towels because it's difficult to get paper towels and stuff around here and you're, you're probably running into the same sort of thing where you are um, so what I because I save all my paper towels for the drippings I'm just pulling from that and I'm just gonna further embellish them with more ink um, and continue that road, down that road because I don't want to waste paper towels during this time I just want that to be a little bit lighter, so I'm just pull it off. I can just come in here while it's still wet and create sort of my where my landscape comes in. I use this stirrer to manipulate. I'm not using any alcohol, no, nothing to uh, reconstitute the ink. I'm just coming in here with this while it's still wet and creating some texture and design in there. Okay, the first thing that I want to show is normally in a container like this, I keep a little bit of isopropyl alcohol so that I can um, dip my brush in it and paint. And um, But I'm not going to actually do that today. I am going to um, take one of my inks that I don't use as often. This is called Salmon, and it's a lighter color. <clears throat> and it does have dye in it, so it does have a little bit of color, but I can use it just like I use alcohol and it's so light. So if you have a lighter color of alcohol ink and you need to <clears throat> create texture and stuff, you can do that. So you can see in my cup here, I have a little bit of that salmon and now I can come in and start lifting. Look at that. See how that works? I 
And I'm not using alcohol, I'm just using another color of the ink to do the lifting. And I'm just creating a tree. Okay, I've lifted out one tree. Now I'm going to show you another way that you can you, you not use alcohol. And it's actually, it does use alcohol, but I happen to have one of these alcohol ink fillable pens. Here's mine that has alcohol ink. And I just pull it from my, and I have blender written on it. And you can use these. These are great. So if you have these, you can use these to lift. So I can come in and lift more here on my tree. The other thing that you can use are alcohol ink markers. They work great for lifting and manipulating the ink. So most of these sets, a, a lot of the alcohol ink marker sets have um, a a clear or a blending blending one. This particular set are Bix and they do not, but I can always take one of the lightest colors and work with that. So I can come back in here with this light color and lift out and do things in here. Additionally, I have, I have multiple sets of alcohol ink markers. So if you have alcohol ink markers, you can use these to either paint on top or you can use them to lift and manipulate that pour that you did. And most of them include a blender, but if, if you don't have one, you can use a very light gray or maybe a, this, this is such a lavender color, it almost looks white. Um, so you could do that. If you have a blender pen, and many of us have a bunch of these, so you can use a blender pen, and that works just like this pen here that, we, that I had loaded. So the blender pens, you can just use those to lift out ink, and so I'll, do, I'll demonstrate that here. You can see I am lifting out another tree. It takes a couple of passes with these, but because we're working on a non-porous surface, we can blend all the way to white. And I like to, to wipe it off onto my paper afterwards. Look what other blender pens I had. This one's dried out. Here we go. This is an artist loft blender and it comes from Michaels. And I can use it. This one, the, my Spectrum Noir is pretty old. It's probably about five or six years old. And uh, it um, has dried up, but you can see. So many of us have blenders or light colored markers that, we can, that are alcohol based that we can use. And that's what I'm gonna do here. I'll clean up this one. This one's working really, really well. Helps to wipe it off on a paper towel or a napkin. So the next thing that I want to show you is you can create some texture um, using other colors of alcohol ink. So we're going to put, we're going to texturize these trees in the back, uh, this this sort of landscape in the back. We're going to texturize that and then come back in. And we might have to relift some of that some of that that's going to cover up our trees, but that's okay. One of the things that um, I'll tell you if you're not into or you haven't done a whole lot of realistic um, art is that it's a process of layering and you, to make it look realistic and you kind of have to go back and forth. So you're lifting out, you're adding detail, you're lifting out, you're adding detail. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take my um, lettuce here and I'm going to take a piece of plastic, any piece of plastic, and I have some plastic here that I'm just going to grab. Crumble that up. Wax paper works great for this. Um, deli paper. Sponges. Sponges work awesome. I'll show you one of the sponge in a minute. But I'm just coming in here and I'm tapping and I'm sort of turning around so that I don't have the same pattern over and over. I just add a little bit more here. Okay. 
the more you tap, the more um, interest and texture you get in that background. So tap, tap, tap away. All right, I'm gonna switch over to, um, <laughs> you're gonna laugh at this one. I switch over to a roller and, um, you know, you can go to the dollar store and you buy these hair rollers that have sponges. They work great. So what I do is I take them and I cut them up into pieces and I'll show you and, the, and um, so I can work with, they work awesome for creating texture like I'm showing you right here. So let's go and put a little bit of the green onto, he, onto the uh, sponge and just start tapping. So I put a lot, but that's okay because I'm going to work it a lot here to give it the different um, layers that I'm going to be adding here. And again, I said I'm going to have to lift those trees out. That's okay. I'm not going to be concerned about that at the moment. Uh, this is sort of an afterthought, but that's, a, that's one of the beauties of alcohol ink is you can have afterthoughts and go back and then you can just fix it. It's just a beautiful thing. Okay. Okay, we're not using alcohol at all. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of alcohol or some blending solution there. But I'm not doing that. I'm just coming in here and tapping. As it dries, I keep tapping. This is going to give me a layer in the background of the screen. Okay, now I'm going to go to the other side of my sponge here and I'm going to do a layer with the yellow on top of the green. Kind of bring it forward a little bit. Uh, to give her some detail in, in this area. I'm going to go up into the green, but not totally cover it. I'm going to switch over to a, a deeper yellow honeycomb and put another layer on top of that. Again, not using any alcohol at all, except in that blender pen, these blender pens. So if you don't, like I said, if you don't have a blender pen, but you have a light colored alcohol marker, that, work, that will work too. You might not be able to get totally to white, but if you have a light enough color, you probably actually can. Okay, so I'm going to go back and relift out my trees. I think I got some really interesting... Um, texture going on there. So I think I'll mention again that in order to lift to white, you really do need to be working on a non-porous surface. So things that work are tile. Tile works great for lifting back to white. Um, another is um, obviously my favorite, Upo paper. And then what I'm working on here is the back of photo paper. And I use the Kirkland brand photo paper, the back side. Nara paper, there's um, ceramic tile paper. Um, all of these substrates work really well. Some people use Duralar from Graphics. We have on our website, we have a full list of substrates that you can use for alcoholing that work really well. Okay, for detail, I like to use a bunch of like illustrator pens. My favorite to use are the Micron pens. They, they come in different um, tip widths. They're Pigma Microns. They're archival ink. Then there are some, there are many, many brands of these. This is Artist Loft, which is, which is the uh, Michaels brand. This is Precision Pen, which I got at the dollar store that I like to work with. This one right here is a Spectrum Noir Artliner. 
Um, so we're just gonna, I'm just gonna use, I just randomly pulled these out of my pen drawer. So let's add some detail. Nothing wants to write today. Here we go. This is a brush pen. And I'm going to soften these edges in, but I just want to define them a little bit first. There we go. Go back to my artist off pen here. Lift out a little bit better. This. Okay. Now I'm going to use some of this <clears throat> light colored. Um, alcohol ink, this case is salmon, which is just almost clear when you add it down. But I'm going to use that with a very small brush to add some more detail to my tree. You don't have to do that. You could stop here um, and be fine. But we want to add some shadowing and shading. So what I'm doing, this that brush that I pulled around, I'm kind of bringing it into the tree a bit especially on the side away from the light. So I want to say my light is right here in the center. So on this side, I want my shadowing to be on the right side. And on this side, I want my shadowing to be on the left side. <clears throat> so I'm going to start, turn this over and start over here. <clears throat> so I'm going to blend some of this edge in. Not precisely, just roughly. Just blend it in. And I'm, I'm kind of touching that edge and just blend it into the background. Same over here. Get a little bit more of that alcohol ink on that brush. So it works really good. You can also use your blender pen for this as well. And I'll demonstrate on the next, this next tree with that. So starting on the edge, just blend in. And that's what a blender pen is actually made for, is for blending. So it kind of works good. Just softly blend that in. Does not need to be exact by any. Don't be a perfectionist here. This is not the time to do that. You can create lovely art. So look at those trees already, how realistic that's looking. And all we did was just sort of blend in just a little bit. So I'm really digging this blender pen for this. I'm going to finish this off with the blender pen. <clears throat> Don't have a blender pen? Use a lighter color, like a light gray um, marker. I actually like to paint a lot with with the alcohol ink markers. I I'm a con I try not to be, but I tend to be a control freak when I do my painting, and uh, those markers let me do a lot of what I need to do or what I want to do. There we go. All right, and then the next thing I want to do is take in, take my, uh, let's see. Take this, I'm going to put a few little 
notches in these trees. Give them, especially these over here that look the aspens. These trees have stuff. You just want to make sure it's random, as random as you can be. And then what you can do is just kind of like, I like to do this, this is fun. You could take a little bit of a, like a, uh, put a little bit of dot here, almost like a triangle, and then come out with it and create a darker branch. Do that over here. And these branches can wind and weave and, you know, do what they do. Okay, and then I can just come up and finish up my painting by putting in some little, some grassy areas. You could put in, you could put in like a little tree lines here. This is a brown sepia brush pen. Um, you can use black alcohol ink for this, or any black pen that you have. And then I like to draw grass around my tree, and I just take my the tip of my brush and just flick it up, and it creates. It creates nice little grass. So I take the bottom and just flick up. Some tall tr grass around these trees. Then also add with a smaller brush some in the back. So things get smaller to the eye as they're further away. So, you know, if you're adding it in the background, you just want to make sure it's smaller and not as um, detailed as things that are in the foreground. Okay. Thanks for watching. So this is just a challenge to show you that you can create alcohol ink with what you have on hand without having to rush out and buy alcohol or feel guilty about using what you might have left in your bottle. Um, if you use it this way with representational painting, a little tiny bit of alcohol will go a long way. So I hope you enjoyed this. Everyone uh, stay well, stay safe, and hang in there. We're going to get through this. Have a good day. It's a life-changing opportunity. Excite the art.